We were playing in the field when it happened and we hear the you know sound of crackers but then we saw those two guys running uh, we started running towards where the sound was coming from both same height and they were wearing uh, black apparels and they uh, they were masked i told mulki to you know it's uh, just to chase them bupender ji the eh eh apne jithe guru ghar walon chal gaye ਇਹਨਾਂ ਵੇਖਾ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਉਧਰ ਪਿੱਕੇ ਵਾਲੇ ਚਲ ਗਏ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਜਿੱਜੇ ਮੁੰਡੇ ਪਰ ਭਾਜ ਮਗਰ ਚਲ ਗਿਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਮਤਲਬ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਭਾਰੇ ਸਰੀਰ ਦੇ ਕਾਫੀ ਇੱਕ ਤੇ ਕਾਫੀ ਭਾਰਾ ਸਰੀਰ ਦਾ ਕੋ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਉਹ ਕੋ ਭੱਜਿਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਸਾਹ ਚੜਿਆ ਸੀ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਤੇ ਮਾਸਕ ਪਾਏ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵੇਖਣ ਨੇ ਅੱਖਾਂ ਉਹ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਲੱਗਦੇ ਸੀ ਮਤਲਬ ਕਿ ਕਾਫੀ ਭੱਜ ਕੇ ਦੂਰ ਗਏ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਇੱਥੇ ਗੱਡੀ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਬਹਿ ਗਏ ਉੱਥੇ ਉਹ ਆਈ ਟ੍ਰਾਈ ਟੂ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ ਹਿਸ ਚੈਸਟ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਨੋ try to shake and to see if he, if he was breathing but he was totally unconscious he was not breathing police in british columbia say the man killed outside a sikh temple sunday night appears to have been targeted they have identified the shooting victim as the temple's president hardeep singh nijar so that day in the morning epic father's day we had gotten him a gift a pair of jeans cuz he usually goes through them really quickly cuz he just loves wearing jeans in general and we had gotten him his regular size he joked that you know you got me a size too big and i joked that we'll see and he said don't worry within like a week or two you're going to have to go exchange these jeans and get me a size smaller and i said if you do, do that i'll buy you five more That's how I went to vote in the morning. And then later at 8, I want to say 8:20, 8:20ish, 8:20 p.m., uh he called again saying that um I'll be leaving in 5-10 minutes and then my mom informed him that you know we'd made same for him that you know he got more excited he's like I'm coming right now that same yours one of his favorite desserts to eat. And obviously just 7 minutes after that the incident happened how did you learn it around 8:40 p.m. a family friend called and he said your dad's been shot and my first sense was i just gave him a call first ring and didn't pick up gave him another ring didn't pick up again and then at that moment i just grabbed my jacket you know and uh, my mom and brother they said we're coming to and then from there we just rushed the gurdwara i just started searching his name like on social media on google to kind of maybe get an update on what happened there are a few indian media posts saying her deep nature has been killed so my mom was basically asking me what well, maybe if there's something on social media i just told her that you know once we get there let's see what happened so you didn't tell her you saw the news that he had died no i didn't tell her But once we got there it was probably 9 p.m. by then and i just ran as fast as i could and my main focus was just getting there like i couldn't think of anything else i was like i just want to see him and i could see his pickup and right away i just knew that he had passed and i made a small prayer in my head i asked god to give me courage to pass the news to the rest of my family News coming in this Monday morning Khalistani terrorist has been shot dead in Canada ke army terrorist Hardeep Nijar has been killed The word Khalistani means someone who supports the creation of an independent Sikh country called Khalistan India considers the Khalistan movement a security threat Hardeep Singh Nijar worked tirelessly from Surrey to accomplish that For most Canadians it may come as a shock to learn there's an active independence movement in Canada for another country on the other side of the world. For Canadian Sikhs and Hindus, it is in some ways the legacy of the partition of India by the British in 1947. Then the largest chunk of land became the Republic of India, 
The smaller part became the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Despite having ruled Punjab for over half a century before colonization, the Sikhs got left out by the British. Dan Stanton was a senior Canadian intelligence officer for 30 years. During that time, he investigated extremism, including within the Sikh community. He said it was an issue in Canada in the 1980s, but has long since died out. Stanton retired from CSIS four years ago. Who is Hardeep Singh Najir? He's a, he's a Canadian. He was an activist and he did promote the idea of Khalistan. I have my doubts that he was a terrorist. The Indian government uh, has a proven track record of in many ways wanting to denigrate the, uh, the Sikh community in Canada. What's the truth about Sikh extremism? There's new evidence that the Indian government has embarked on a campaign to give Sikhs a bad name. There are even some conservative MPs who are beginning to wonder if Ottawa is being misled by New Delhi. And so they'll often create this illusion that there's all these Sikh terrorists in Canada uh, uh, going around. So I, I'm skeptical uh, about the assertions that he was a terrorist. We asked the Indian High Commission in Ottawa to let us know what the evidence is that Niger was a terrorist, but they never responded to us. This is video that the mainstream Indian media use in their reporting about Niger, identifying him as the person shooting the firearms here claiming he ran a terrorist training camp in BC. But the person in this video seems to bear no resemblance to Niger. So we investigated. People in Surrey who should know have confirmed the man in this video is not Hardeep Singh Niger. In fact, through friends and family, we were able to confirm his identity. But for his safety, we're not releasing his name. Where's the line between free speech and fomenting dissent. People have to actually do things to support terrorism. It could be, um, you know, providing money, funds, things like that. And so th it's, it's like a checklist. And if the individual isn't going through that checklist, so to speak, they remain an activist. One method the Indian government uses to conduct its propaganda campaign inside this country is this. It distributes a mountain of Indian newspapers, free and unsolicited, to a number of Sikh businesses. Then there are other government publications like this one, which states that Sikhs in Vancouver are receiving combat training at the YMCA. That's something that came as a complete surprise to the Y. Another Canadian accused of terrorism by the Indian government is Gurpatwant Singh Panu. We are going to balkanize India! This was a non-binding referendum organized by Panu in Surrey, B.C. in September 2023. He's a dual Canadian and American citizen, known widely for two things. Holding referendums around the world, so local Sikh communities can vote on whether to carve out an independent country from a part of India, which they want to call Khalistan. He also posts videos online, making inflammatory statements seemingly designed to enrage the Indian government. And with the Guru's blessings and challenging Indian Prime Minister, Hindu terrorist Modi. And enrage India's government he has. As you will see, that would lead to a global murder plot investigated by policing agencies in four different countries. But first, something else would happen to grab international headlines. Just weeks after that referendum in Surrey, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau makes a stunning announcement in the House of Commons. Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen. Hardeep Singh Nijar. Any involvement of a foreign government in the killing of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil is an unacceptable violation of our sovereignty. There's one simple vision hack anyone can use to improve vision, so you can say goodbye to your optometrist for good. Did you? 
talk about the other big story of the day. After the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made baseless claims of India's involvement in Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijar's murder. The government of India calls Justin Trudeau's claims of a murder for hire plot absurd. It took days of official silence, but finally a statement from India's foreign minister. We told the Canadians that uh, this is not the government of India's policy. But the Indian media have been relentless, taunting the Prime Minister to show evidence of a Canadian hit list, questioning whether any real proof exists. In Ottawa, opposition leader Pierre Polyev joins in the chorus. I think the Prime Minister needs to come clean with all the facts. We need to know all the evidence possible so that Canadians can make judgments on that. Do you think Canadians will ever see the hard evidence implicating potential agents of the Indian government? No. But finally, after two months from south of the border, evidence shows up. American authorities were quietly working to thwart an alleged murder-for-hire plot on U.S. soil linked to the Indian government. Court documents are unsealed in New York, detailing an Indian plot to kill an unnamed sick lawyer, a dual citizen of Canada and the U.S. The plot begins in India, when an Indian intelligence officer recruits a narcotics and weapons trafficker who's facing multiple criminal charges in India. His name, Nikhil Gupta. In recorded conversations, the intelligence officer suggests a deal. If Gupta arranges a murder in New York, the charges against him in India will be dropped. Nikhil Gupta allegedly agrees to broker the killing. So the intelligence officer introduces Nikhil Gupta to a middleman in New York who will arrange the hit. Unknown to the plotters in New Delhi, that man is a double agent who's also working for the U.S. and will reveal all of this to the Americans. Indian intelligence agrees to pay the hit man in advance of $15,000 in cash, payment to be made in a car in New York. From India, Nikhil Gupta contacts the hitman to tell him it's time to carry out the murder. But there's a catch, he says. There should be no killing during the upcoming U.S. visit of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Now the plan is about to go into high gear. Nikhil Gupta video calls the hitman to tell him that there is a big target in Canada. Two days later, Gupta confirms, we will be needing one good team in Canada also. Four days after that, on Father's Day 2023, Hardeep Singh Nijar is gunned down in Surrey, BC. A few hours later, the Indian intelligence officer sends Gupta a video clip showing Nidger's bloodied body slumped in his Dodge Ram truck. I'd strongly suggest that the folks who, who carried out the assassination took the pictures uh, and sent proof home. Now it's time for the hit on the New York lawyer. Nikhil Gupta relays the message to the hitman that the killing must be done quickly because there are three others in Canada they need to eliminate before the end of the month. But 10 days later, at the request of the U.S. government, Nikhil Gupta is arrested in the Czech Republic, charged with conspiring to murder the unnamed lawyer in New York. Gupta is currently awaiting extradition. The name of the intended victim in New York is not included in the unsealed indictment. But we now know it was Gurpatwat Singh Panu, a man with a bounty on his head. Though he gives interviews over the phone and on video calls from time to time, he rarely meets with journalists in person. Yep. Panu's notoriety comes from angry videos he posts on social media denouncing the Indian government. Wireless begets wireless. Is Modi government 
रेडी टू फेस द कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस And what we learn during our visit is that the way Panu speaks online and in public is quite different from how he speaks in private. Panu was also a close friend of Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Where did you first meet? I met uh, Hardeep Singh Nijjar in uh, Surrey and that was I think it was 2008. And uh, at that time we were running a campaign that 1984 anti-sikh violence uh, was under rights uh, we wanted the world and the global community to recognize this as a genocide the 66 year old prime minister was a victim of gunmen identified as sikh extremists in 1984 indian prime minister indira gandhi was killed by two sikh bodyguards retribution for an attack on the Sikh holy site called the Golden Temple. The main targets of the attacks were members of the Sikh community. Angry Hindu mobs attacked and pillaged stores and burned buses. Soon, violence against Sikhs erupted across India, killing 3,000 according to the Indian government. Sikhs say it was really many more than that, and the killings were state sponsored. Genocide, they called it. I was able to get the information under the Right to Information Act from the um, Indian Parliament, and what I saw was that over 37,000 families were compensated for their immediate family members being dead, injured, and if we have 37,000 families, there is no way in the world only 3,000 people were killed. Can you tell us where and when you were when you learned about his death? You know that's that is something. Uh, a day before uh, this happened, that was Saturday, June seventeenth. That's when I spoke to him, and he told me uh, that the Canadian intelligence agencies have approached him just a a day before that, and they they warned him that his life is in danger. He sounded like very very concerned. and then next day june 18th one of the individuals who we have been working with he called one of our main coordinators that panu is not picking up the phone just tell him that hardeep singh nijjar has been shot and he's been killed right there you say that he told you ultimately that there had been threats yes in retrospect when you think about it now is there anything you could have done to take precautions that might have prohibited that. I think it's a good question Bob the but the I'm the not the right person to talk on this one. You should be talking to the Canadian agency that you are going to an individual uh, emphasizing over and over and giving them a piece of paper that you know this is a warning that your life is in danger. Could they have done something more? Or should they do something even now? Means what can we do? What can we do? Gurpat Ranjan Singh Panu says he has no doubt Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi ordered the killing in Canada of Hardeep Singh Nijjar. And because of that he says the culpability of others should be obvious. This would be a surprise to me if the Indian High Commissioner sitting in Canada doesn't know that who has been hired and this is going to be hit. It's impossible. The media in India have often broadcast names of those labeled as terrorists by the Indian government or who may have had a price put on their heads. In the latest National Investigation Agency has issued rewards and named at least 43 individuals. 20 lakh is the total reward being announced. NIA declares a cash reward of 10 lakh rupees on Hardeep Nijjar. When you have put up a bounty on Nijjar's head, when 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 you have put up a bounty on my head, stating let's go to uh, Canada, let's go to US and locate them, and then give us the information, where else I'm going to point the fingers? Hey, did you know you can learn a hundred songs on piano in one hour? No way! All you need to learn is four chords. These. Panu clearly takes a plot to murder him 
very seriously. On any given day, he's accompanied by several armed guards, all former law enforcement or military. Before Panu enters his house, which is in a gated community, his guards go in first and search it room to room. Do you believe the government of India truly believes that when, when you make your appearances at temples across Canada or across North America or around the world, that you constitute a national security threat to India? That is the disconnect between the uh, Indian democracy and the Western democracy. We follow the international laws and we campaign that lets the Sikh people, the indigenous people of Punjab, give them a chance to vote. That's the reason they killed Niger. That's the reason they wanted to kill me, to stop a peaceful democratic process of Khalistan referendum. Panu says he doesn't like to speak about the plot to kill him that it distracts from his cause. Cheers. But he is also skeptical about how far American and Canadian leaders are really willing to go against India. Making deals. While a US court and Department of Justice is saying and indicting an individual who was acting on behalf of the Indian agencies to have a plot and to kill me. And luckily, with Guru's blessings, I'm sitting with you today talking just because Indian agents picked up the wrong shooter. And in Niger's case, unfortunately, they picked up the right shooter. It's a cause Pano says he's willing to die for. But he also says he wants to live long enough to achieve his ultimate goal, an independent Sikh homeland to be known as Khalistan. During the production of this documentary, we had unrestricted access to Gurbat Wan Singh Panu at the gym, his home, and traveling from location to location. The only condition was that we not disclose our movements or his security details to anyone else. Panu has now held several non-binding referendums in Canada for six to vote on whether they want that independent Sikh country to be created. But on this day, he's heading to San Francisco to hold a referendum for American Sikhs for the first time. For now, two questions still linger. Will American Sikhs turn out to support him in the same large numbers that Canadian Sikhs did? And what will happen to him and the other targets of those murder-for-hire plots on Canadian and U.S. soil. It's the first time a referendum for six is being held in the U.S. The Indian government and many political analysts quoted by the media say that most six don't want an independent country for themselves. But the Sikh community is not as concentrated in San Francisco as it is in Surrey, British Columbia. Here we find Gurmeet Singh Tour. He sits on the executive committee of the Gurdwara where Hardeep Singh Nijar was the president. He says he too was given a warning by the RCMP in August that his life was in danger. <laughs> This is it, the moment Gurpatwan Singh Panu has been waiting for and planning for, for years. <laughs> to finally see the level of support American Six will give him in his quest for an independent state. 
and the crowd doesn't disappoint. Tens of thousands show up, so many that not everyone is able to vote before the polling station closes. Surrey, B.C. is known as Little India. A third of its population are Canadians of Indian origin. And it was here in Surrey that Hardeep Singh Nijjar lived with his wife, two sons, and elderly parents. He ran a successful plumbing business, his truck still a familiar sight around Surrey. And according to the unsealed U.S. murder indictment, he was one of the top targets on the Indian government's Canadian hit list. So who were the three other unnamed targets, described as being of greater value to India than Niger, in that unsealed indictment? There may be clues in the murder of another Sikh, killed in Canada the year before, 2022. Rapudaman Singh Malik, a man acquitted in the 1985 Air India bombings, was shot dead yesterday in what police believe was a targeted killing. Maninder Singh is spokesperson for the BC Gurdwaras Council. He knows the Malik family well. I think there is definitely within the community more of an inclination towards that this also was the hand of the Indian uh, government through their intelligence operatives. We understand this is a high profile international story. However, we urge not to speculate as to the motive, as our homicide investigators will be following the evidence. Two weeks after Malik's death, police announced they had charged two men who've pleaded not guilty. Trial is set for October. Malik's family declined to be interviewed about the murder. Malik's eldest son, Jess Breed. I have in the past been critical of certain members of the RCMP and the way they handled the Air India investigation. But that's not who's doing this investigation. The people doing this investigation, I have full faith. They're properly trained. They know what they're doing. They'll find whoever did this. Air India Flight 182 from Vancouver to London was blown up over the Atlantic Ocean on June 23, 1985. Jaspreet Malik's father was one of two men tried and acquitted in that bombing. And consider this. The Fifth Estate obtained access to Malik's WhatsApp account from the night before he was killed. It shows three calls from an iPhone with an Indian telephone number, one belonging to a former consular officer at the Indian Consulate in Vancouver. A copy of Malik's personal journal shows he had a meeting scheduled at 10 a.m. the next morning with someone with the same first name as that former consular officer. However, at 9.30, half an hour before the scheduled meeting, Malik was shot to death in the parking lot of his family business. The Indian High Commission in Ottawa declined to speak with us. But Malik's death isn't the only thing that's triggered fear India is targeting Canadian six. During our investigation, we met with five different men from Surrey who told us that they had been served with what's called a duty to warn notice by the RCMP. This is an excerpt of an audio recording provided to us from one of those meetings. At the core of the threat against his life, oh. and if he understands it, because he seems to be very calm uh, for someone that's just learned that there's, you know, people or someone uh, would not able to provide all the details, but that would want to harm him. Duty to warn is police terminology for the urgency to inform an individual that they're likely targeted for death. Specifics of how the RCMP learns about this kind of threat have not been revealed. Balraj is Hardeep Singh Nijjar's eldest son. In late July of 2022, the RCMP visited the house. There were about four or five officers. They came to give us a duty to warn, which is telling us that there was an imminent threat against my dad's life. 
that he should be very careful. We were asking questions like, oh, do you know who this threat came from? But the RCMP and NSA division were very reluctant to answer those questions, saying we can't disclose that information. I guess the question in the back of my mind is, uh, have, there been, have there been others and will there be others? It sounds like they intended for there to be others. Uh, if you read, no, there may already have been. Who knows sure. exactly? Because there are a number of Sikh kill killings of Sikhs in Canada which have uh, unsolved. gone unsolved. That includes questions being raised about Malik's murder. The details of how he was killed are similar to how Hardeep Singh Nijjar died a year later. Both men were ambushed in their vehicles. In both cases, there were two alleged shooters. Which brings us to this question. Who were the other three unnamed Canadian targets mentioned in that U.S. indictment? How many times have you received a duty to warn from the RCMP? I've received one duty to warn in July 2022. That warning came immediately after Raputaman Singh Malik was shot to death. In many of our minds, we were actually a world away from that violence, from those human rights abuses, that extrajudicial murder that was happening for, you know, 15, 20 years in Punjab. So with Hardeep's assassination, it actually made us realize that we're not out of that zone of influence or India's reach. We're very much within it. Maninder Singh is a staunch supporter of an independent Khalistan and one of Nijjar's best friends. Unlike other targets like Nijjar and Panon, Meninder was born and raised in Canada, which may make him more relatable for Canadian-born Sikhs than the others are. And it seems those from the community may tend to listen to him. So much so, in fact, that on the night Hardeep Singh Nijjar was killed, Meninder was able to control a highly emotional crowd. A pretty large crowd of a few thousand people gathered within 30 to 45 minutes. I spoke there for about 10 minutes letting everyone know this is how we take this as a people, and for everyone to basically in that moment keep the peace. Maninder Singh says there was no one else he was closer to than Nijjar. It was a relationship that was built not only on friendship, but also on a movement uh, where we felt like we were soldiers in this movement for our people, for getting them justice, for getting them sovereignty. And I think for 15 or 17 years, it almost feels like you were in a bunker with someone. And every moment uh, of existence was tied together. He knows their deep friendship, steadfast support for Khalistan, and the constant speaking out against India must be thorns in the side for a Hindu nationalist prime minister like Narendra Modi. Coming up, what can be seen in security footage from the night Hardeep Singh Nijjar was murdered? A chilling minute-by-minute -minute look at a political assassination. So my dad, he was kind of like a superhero to me just growing up. It was other people kind of have role models being like athletes or singers. For me, he was my role model. but. This period of time is sort of hard for me to understand on how to approach life. I'm trying to cope with this passing and find my place maybe in the community. And on the other hand, there's this communal expectation that you need to step forward for your dad now, that, you know, his his work, what he has done, his seat is now yours to take, that this is your path to walk now. But I'm sort of hesitant in a sense right now that I've seen him do it for so long that I just can't imagine myself being him. There'll be a lot of people trying to take advantage of us, trying to use us politically for their own adva advancement. and. It's kind of difficult to understand if 
someone's acting as dad's friend or if they want to just use it for their betterment. Now 22, Balraj Nidger has followed a very different path from that of his father. Admitted to the University of Toronto's medical school, among the toughest in the country, he wants to practice medicine in rural Canada, where there's a shortage of physicians. I was supposed to start in September, but obviously following his passing and just the reading situation, I had to postpone the admission. Balraj, his mother and younger brother have told us that going forward, they've decided to stay out of the public eye. I think if they haven't been able to find a true path to move the investigation forward over the course of the last couple of months, they're not going to find it now. However, based on eyewitness accounts and security video, we were able to piece together what happened the night Hardeep Singh Nijjar was killed. It is a unique step-by-step -step record of the alleged political assassination of a Canadian in Canada. It is Father's Day 2023, just before sundown. Hardeep Singh Nijjar walks out of the Surrey Sikh temple called the Gurdwara. This is the last known footage of him alive. Walking behind is Gurmeet Singh Tour, who we met in Surrey, and who says he also was warned by the RCMP that his life is in danger. Soon, Nidger's truck is seen pulling out of its parking spot, driving down the laneway that leads out of the lot. Then a white sedan appears on the other side of the lane. When Nidger's truck speeds up, the sedan does too. The white car suddenly pulls ahead of the truck and comes to a stop in front, blocking Nidger, who seems trapped in his pickup. Suddenly, two men in hoodies appear near the exit and run towards Nidger. They point firearms at the driver's seat and they begin to shoot. Then the white sedan exits the parking lot and disappears from view. The two men in hoodies follow, running in the same direction. Gurdwara member Malkit Singh, who was nearby, told us he saw the two men in hoodies get into a silver Toyota Camry. This is security camera footage of that vehicle. With at least six men and two vehicles, it seems clear that Hardeep Singh Nidger's murder was a large, well-organized operation. This is the actual security camera footage from that day. It is somewhat difficult to see because it's taken at a distance, so we've slowed it down. This is Nidger's truck on the right of the screen, and this is the white sedan on the left. You can barely see them, but these are the two killers running towards Nidger's truck. It's at this moment that the shooting begins and the white sedan pulls away. The two men are running in the same direction. At this point, our deep Singh Nidger is either dead or dying. How to open your car door while submerged underwater? A fatal construction flaw in all recent automobiles makes it virtually Thank you, Chair, and good morning, members of the committee. The public hearing into foreign political interference in Canada is now underway, examining which countries may be trying to interfere with and influence the outcome of elections in Canada. Initially, it had only looked at China and Russia. It now will also look at Indian interference. Dan Stanton 
former chief of counterterrorism for the Canadian Security Service, CSIS, is among the experts called to testify. Looking back on your years with CSIS, can you estimate how much of your time then would have been consumed by issues that we would now consider to be foreign interference? At least 50% of it is what today would be seen as foreign interference. Right. How was it seen then? Well, back then, uh, you know, it was more state-on-state -state espionage and uh, foreign interference was more targeting diaspora communities. There wasn't what we understand is the case where some of these states have actually targeted our electoral processes and targeted members of parliament and things like that. So the threat has kind of evolved and become more sophisticated. And then later at, at certain times in my career, uh, you know, the issue of Indian foreign interference would pop up because uh, it had been kind of a consistent threat, um, but not to the point that it appears to be now. That might seem an understatement. Journalist Sam Cooper reported that Indian agents appeared to have interfered in the Federal Conservative Party's leadership race in 2022. A CSIS intelligence assessment stated that Indian agents purchased party memberships for one candidate in order to undermine the candidacy of another, specifically Brampton Mayor Patrick Brown. Mr. Brown, you're up. How did you respond on a gut level when you saw that? In some ways I wasn't surprised because my experience with foreign interference is that over time they become more sophisticated and they become a little bolder. But six separatist Gurpatwant Singh Panu refuses to give up. Later this month, on March 31st, he will hold a second referendum in the U.S., in Sacramento, California. He says one way or the other, it will be the next step in the creation of an independent country for the six, carved out of India, which they will call the Republic of Khalistan. India will never agree to giving up Punjab, but to what end do you hold these referendums? India should basically learn from the history of the British rulers, whoever used to say that their rulers' sun never sets, but one day it did. You mark my word, between 11 years to 21 years, we'll be free.